The, the second talk, the title is Capturing and Display 3D Avatars in Immersive Environment. And the speaker is Professor Ye Pan. Professor Ye Pan is an associate professor at Shanghai Jiao Tong University, where she leads a character lab and focuses on using virtual environments and computer graphics technologies to advance character animation and avatar performance and thus improve user experience. She previously worked as at Disney Research Los Angeles and received master and PhD in computer science from University College London. She has served as associate editor of the International Journal of Human Computer Studies and a regular member of IEEE virtual reality program committees. And let's welcome Professor Pan to uh, give the second talk. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. It looks like my camera is not working, but anyway. So. Uh, it's everything, I think everything is set up. So I'm going to talk about the avatars uh, and the characters in today's talk. Um, so in today's talk, I basically divided my talk into two parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about how to create characters and animate it. And the second part is how to display it on the 3D displays in the virtual environment. So here's my brief introduction at the uh, the, you probably already heard. So let's go to the next page. So the first thing is why we're doing it. Uh, there was a lot of the characters in, in our life. Like we meet the stylized characters, we meet the hu human beings in the virtual environment. So when we're in the 3D environment, we will interact with the humans and the characters and the different kinds of creatures. And in my research, I'm particularly interested in the stylized characters. So uh, a very big background, so motion capture. To creating the characters, we all know that we use uh, motion captures like putting a lot of markers on the people's face and then or put a lot of markers on people's body as well. But uh, we all have noticed there was a problem is that when we capture human beings and they cannot express that exaggerated expressions as the stylized characters. For example, if you open your mouth very large, uh, there was a limitation for you human beings mouth. However, for the stylized characters, you can open as much as you want. That is the problem that we're going to solve for capturing char characters. Um, first, I'll give you an example. For example, like if you can see the first slide was a lot of the human beings face like in the different expressions. If we use the nowadays motion capture software like the AR kit or the uh, from the like the iPhone or you will use the faceware on the Windows PC to capture the human face, we can only capture the geometry features, but we cannot express character very expressively with like artist created characters. So we developed a method to overcome this problem in order to making the character very, very expressive. And like the last, last four lines are example of the creating the stylized characters. You can see on the face where there was a no expression basically, even though it's geometrically very matched. However, for the last couple of this, characters we created, you can see a very expressive one. Okay, I'm going to talk about how we create this. First of all, uh, we created the match, we use a deep learning method to get finding a match of the expressions and we divided expressions into seven categories so that uh, we can get the emotion matched. And then we use the geometry, geometry match method to adding a layer on the blend shape animations. And then finally, we extend it to the multiple characters. And the, the basic idea is adding a machine learning model on top of the traditional motion like blend shape animation pipeline. Uh, like the top lines are blend shape animation pipelines. And then the second, uh, the 
the last two lines is a two model for integrating machine learnings. Here is examples is how we created like the uh, character. This is the motion capture combined with our messages like this. So, so your band do you, uh, have audio for this video? So uh, yes, it was audio. Oh, you cannot hear the audio? Yeah, maybe you, you have to set. Okay. Set up okay. Time. Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. I I will just talk through this audio so that people can understand what's actually going on. And uh, so this this the, the this is actually the audio that you express that uh, the character can express their fa facing facial expression based on our models instead of just uh, getting giving our geometry models right. We adding our emotion features. This is one of the example. Um, so how, uh, in summary, how we're do, uh, doing this is we use the traditional blend shape animation techniques and adding on the machine learning models so that we created the first real-time system that transfers the human facial expression to the multiple stylized characters. It's not only geometry matched, but also perceptually correct. Uh, so this is the first thing that I would like to uh, introduce is our system is uh, like uh, makes the blend shape animation techniques better. And um, as we know that uh, motion capture is one of the method to creating the animations. Another method is completely based on the machine learning technology. So uh, on this one is uh, we created the uh, completely audio-based animation techniques. But before that, we created a data set. We got uh, lots of the animation cli clips from the movies and uh, from the 3D animations, and we collect all of them. And there was some problem with creating this. The first one is that the majority of the data set is on 2D faces, but our data set is for the 3Ds. A couple of them is we created from the 3D animations and a couple of them is we generated from 2D animation and map it to the 3Ds. Uh, once we got this data set, we created like the emotional voice puppetry. This is completely based on the audio input and makes the character talking. And we can apply this to the virtual reality system and uh, some like the uh, phone app as well. Uh, the reason for us to do it is in the virtual reality, when people are wearing the headset, we cannot see our face anymore. We can only see, uh, we, can, we, can only, uh, we cannot see our eyes and the face is very difficult to capture. So the audio driving system is very important in such a system. So based on this data set, we created the uh, audio driven uh, animation gener generation method so that the people in the VR can animate characters. So up to now, we introduced the two methods. The first one is we, we optimize the motion capture method. The second one is we completely use the machine learning technology to creating animation. And last one I'm going to talk about to, to creating the virtual reality uh, uh, film that using keyframe animation. This is the light up with the three types of animation pipelines. For example, using case keyframe completely machine learning, and now we use apply this to the virtual reality film. Uh, how we're doing is is this 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 work is actually be used in the uh, Psycho and the Frozen Two filmmaking system. The problem is like this: why we're doing it? The traditional way to creating the animation is very, very difficult. That people have to rotate the characters so that make sure the angle is correct all the time in Maya. That using the mouse and a desktop interface, and our method is uh, apply this using the virtual reality system. Another background is how the traditional film is made, is that people using a camera to capture the one shoot and they rotate around the camera so that it makes sure that all the angle was correct. Here example is how we um, import this, this like uh, traditional keyframe animation into the motion, uh, into the virtual reality. However, they have a problem is that only the one of the person can say this. This is our first generation of the like the like uh, 
character posing software. And our second software is second, like second version is allows multiple person to animate the characters in the virtual reality. Here is an example how people actually working on it. It's like a two person was actually interact and creating character together. And here example is how we're doing the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics, and also how we scale the character larger or smaller. And it's our interface. And it's not only support keyframe animation, but it's also supports the motion pass editing. And this was developed on the Unity and based on the Photon software. So it can extend to the multiple clients. As examples for the collaborating, animating, editing examples. So in summary, that way, uh, the last way of way creating animation is uh, creating using keyframe animation. But different from the traditional keyframe animation is we import this to the virtual environment. So take away from home. For the capture characters, uh, like today, I introduced the three like a new ways to create animations. The first one is adding machine learning model on the blend shape animation. The second one is completely audio driven animation. It's first we create a data set and then we generate animations completely based on machine learning for 3D stylized character instead of the videos. It was a lot of paper works on the 2D character, but we didn't see much on the for the stylized characters. Okay, next I'm going to move to how can we display those characters. Once we get the character captured and we want to display it nicely, and because this uh, a lot of the human factor was uh, uh, influenced by those uh, those ways, the first one is eye gaze and also interpersonal trust and a physical embodiment, leadership effect, and the engagement. So for a big background, it's as everyone can see on this uh, Mona Lisa like smile, you can see if you rotate around your head left or right, you always feel like the Mona Lisa is looking at you. So the problem for this one is all the 3D image that printed on the 2D surface, the sum of the like spatial clue was getting lost. That's, that is why when you rotate around our multiple is person in the room, of all of them will feel like the Mona Lisa is, like, is looking at you. And also look, if you look at the right picture, there was Uncle Sam pointing to you. No matter where you stay, is standing inside a room, you always feel like he's actually pointing at you. So that is a huge problem for the teleconferencing. But it's not a problem for the virtual reality. So that's it's a more, uh, like, uh, the fundamental motivation we're doing it. This is a very big project that collaborates with a lot of universities that is uh, capture one person and then display this person in another location. It's like a telepresence. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to introduce the four telepresence mixed reality displays that I have been built. The first one is a spherical display and uh, it's supporting like the eye gaze. The reason for this uh, spherical display is uh, it's not only look like the uh, human head, but also like this, if you're situated in the room, everybody around the room can see it, not like the 2D display, only the person in front can see it. And uh, this is uh, similar for the cylindrical display. And the reason for we developed this is uh, supporting multiple users. And next one, I'm going to talk about a random hole display. This is uh, similar to the parallax barrier 3D display, but different from that is we randomize those barriers so that multiple person at arbitrary location can see it. And last one is I'm going to talk about how can we presenting an avatar on a spherical display. Here's the features we developed um, comparing to the flat display. The first one is we capture a person with multiple character cameras and extreme stream those videos onto another location and finally using the computer graphic techniques to present this on the spherical display. 
Uh, this is how we do it. It's quite straightforward. First, we use a capture those cameras. Uh, we use we capture those uh, videos and using projective texture to present it on the spherical display. And uh, this actually nowadays can done in the Unity very simple. But before that, we actually ran, uh, wrote this rendering pipeline. And this display allows uh, 300 degree views, whereas the flat display people can only see from front state. And also because we're using productive texture, so the principle is there always one person can see the correct view, so it can always the correct eye gaze. The next one is the cylindrical display that I have is quite similar to the spherical display, but different from that is we allow multiple users simultaneously to see the correct view. How we do it? This one is we also use the ray of the camera to capture the person, and then we use the ray of the picture to project it on the cylindrical display. With this cylindrical display we created is using a special materials, and uh, it can reflect in the it's using similar to the lenticular lens, but we place it vertically so that very each projected image have very small viewing zone so people can see the different view from different angle. And we did a user study uh, to demonstrate it. Our cylindrical display can better preserve uh, gaze position for the remote person. And the last, the next display I'm talking to talk about is a random hole display. And different from the traditional 3D display is that we randomize this barrier so that multiple users from multiple viewpoint, viewpoint at arbitrary location can simultaneously to see what, what the person or object presented on the display. So, uh, so different from those like a lie barrier, we randomize those dots. So there was the people at an arbitrary location can see the different pixels, but of course they were leads to some conflict pixels. So we random we randomize this as a white noise. Here is the result results of our random whole display. This was an image, actually the photo taken from different perspectives. So the highlights of our dis this display is we use a motion parallax to as a dominant effect to e improve the eye gaze, but also we use the perspective correct view by by the stereo view, like people from left eyes and right eyes will see different image, so that we created a stereo view so to improve the eye gaze direction as well. Uh, the next one is we also found that if we giving a pres giving presenting the avatar on the perspective correct view is improves the trust behavior of human beings. Uh, here for this one is we actually developed the model for evaluating trust because the trust is very difficult to measure. It's not like the, if you say something correctly or you have a right or wrong answer. However, how can we try measuring the trust? It's become very difficult questions. If you give, only give participants participant a questionnaire they were reading them it's not like a very precise answer nowadays normally we need to develop the model so here we develop the trust model for evaluating this display um i'm going to explain this model here to help people actually using our model to evaluate in different like virtual reality displays um, we ask the participant very, very difficult questions, like if, uh, taken from like the who wants to be the billionaire games. Like we ask, what subject will Bill Gates study after study at Harvard? Like those questions, no, people normally don't understand. They were asking from advisors. So we display those advisors on two different types of the displays. One on the flat display and another one is on the spherical display. 
So um, people need to trust one person because there was some uncertainty and uh, risk arri arrived. People were wondering whether the advisors can provide correct answer, like their ability, or will they lie to them, or their motivation was correct. And those kind of the information was normally taken from the interpersonal clues, like if they were looking at the, uh, at the participant. So we found that actually uh, Safari display was a, like a, have more trust comparing to the flag display when the advisor was presenting down the different type, type of the display. This is interesting because it's the same advisor just presenting on the different displays with different viewing angles that will have actually alter the people's trust behavior. And for this, this hardware is very easy to implement, to be honest. Uh, we're just using, this is a quite an old system that we use the Kinect to capture the person and finally uh, using the AR kit. And, uh, and, uh, and not, before that, it was a software called FaceShift. And then it was bought by the Apple and then it's, uh, it's, it's used in the AR kit and finally presented on the spherical display. And here is how people actually viewing like different things from different angles. There was a people looking at the spherical display and looking at the flat display. We found that spherical display because participant can always get correct view. It's actually improves the trust. So people would like to choose more uh, avatars presented on the spherical display instead of the flat display. Uh, here is the summary is how we how the benefits of the using Safari display to use the, in the avatar mediated communication. And, and all those displays actually a mixed reality display. And this can be situated in the room or it can be sit, uh, presented on the large museum. So the people around the, uh, around the display can see the different image from different angles. And the next one is the uh, display that I'm going to introduce here is the uh, telepresence robot. Uh, but it's still actually a display because we're actually projecting an image on the, like the robot face. And we actually found the physical embodiment of a display can actually alter the people's behavior, like alters people's trust. And we compare different kinds of the media way to, to communicate different methods. First, by, for example, using avatar mediate communication and video mediate communication and robot mediate communication. The avatar mediate communication, like before that, I talk about different uh, way of how to creating avatars, but there always uh, there was like the tracking issues and also there was uncanny when it exists. So there was a problem in the like the avatar mediate communication, but also there was the highlights of the avatar mediate communication. If we created very photorealistic avatars and it's more easier to uh, like present it in 3D comparing to the video mediate communications. And also for the uh, robot, the highlights of using a robot as a way to communicate with the people is there was actually a physical embodiment. Like there was actually something standing behind you. It feels different compared to just this, uh, a video standing behind of you. And also, uh, robots can give you the, like a like handshake or this like physical contact, whereas uh, it's impossible for the media, avatar mediated communication or video mediated communication. And uh, there was another like a motion fluency for the robot might be very bad, but there's no problem for the avatar and the video mediated communication. And there were always pros and cons for different type of the ways to communicate with people, for, and like. And the both robot and avatars, they are, they mask out their identities, so people don't know the how the remote person is actually looking at. They were just presented by the avatars. For example, if they, they might be a very old person to present present it, while they use a different kind of the, like the avatar to representing themselves, so people don't know who they are. However, for the video media communications, where you see the video, you know this person, you know this person, you, know, you and then it's actually providing like the more identity clues for while communicate with the people. So 
as we as we talk about the different kind of pros and cons for the different type of the communication methods, uh, we actually run an experiment to see which type of the experiment, which type of the method providing more trust. And here is we also use the trust model, like advice, advice you, to use advice seeking behavior under the risk as a trust model as indicating in that trusting that advisor. Uh, we eventually actually found the both robot and video achieved a similar level of the trust, which is better, higher than the avatar mediated communication. And we asked the participant how this might be. And they said that the physical presence of the robot might be compensated like of the identity cool for the for the robot as well. So both the video and, and the robot achieve the similar level of the trust. Uh, both of them performs better than the avatar mediated communication. And another interesting effect that I would like to talk about in the uh, like the mixed reality is the leadership effect. This actually we did a lot of experiment relating to it. For example, we created a, a person in the virtual environment. We can alter the person. This is like the physical, like a embodiment things. For example, if you embody yourself into a very senior person to communicate with another person, which um, which embodied to the like, uh, like student or the undergrad students. While they will communicate with each other, uh, like the person embodied to the senior person or professor will like become a leader and they will, would act like a professor more, even though if they might be both of them were just a student. This kind of psychology studies has like, happened a lot of time and we imported one of them into the, into the mixed reality. And here is what we did. We embodied the first participant as an avatar in the AR to the AR system. So those avatar was actually presented by the like people and also the AR to the VR body things and AR to the VR things and the AR to the desktop interface. We actually found the person who, who immersed themselves more, for example, in the AR to the AR thing, both of them was actually in the same co-located location. They, while they're doing tasks, there was no bias at all. And also if we embodied our people in the VR things, there was no bias at all. However, if we use the AR to the VR interactions, scenarios, we actually found the person in the AR would like to become a leader during the co collaboration, like they will talk more, they will guide another person. And also the same things was found to the AR to the desktop communication. Like the person in the immersive environment would like to become a leader. They would like to guide another person to doing the task more, even though they know, even though in the social life, they have a similar level of the professionalship. Here's our results. We found the more immersive participant was like to single out as a leader. And we only found the leadership effect uh, for the AR to the desktop scenario and AR to the VR scenario, because it was like, uh, they were more immersive in the AR uh, scenario and instead of the desktop and the VR without the virtual body. However, there was no leadership effect was found in the AR to the VR body, uh, VR scenario with the virtual body and AR to the AR scenario. And we also found the leadership effect only merged out in the 3D interaction, but not for the 2D interactions. This is kind of understandable because the, if things was presented in the 3D, things can do it more easily in the immersive environment, which also doing things in the 3D as well. And the next display is we actually de developed the like the fake 3D effect is using the adap adaptive dynamic anamorphism system. And the idea of this is like we rendering one object from one viewing point and rendering rest of things in another viewing point and glue those things together. For example, we we use the we we render one of the animal from the anamorphic projected image. Well, depending on the one 
user's look eye location so that they always see the correct view while rendering rest of things into the front view and they glue those together. And uh, this these things actually apply to the Disney and, and like a talk in one of the turtles talk. We rendering one of the characters from like a perspective correct view for one VIP viewer and rendering rest of things like the fishes around the turtle to from depth other locations. So the one person would always say that the turtle was actually looking at them and talking to them, blinking the eyes to them, feel like the, uh, different from the rest of the guests. And uh, this is the uh, way found that the eye gaze is actually improved the engagement and improved the the uh, people if we looking at the like the guest more if the character was looking at the guest more they were actually improved the user's engagement and uh, also re the rest of the people they still have a correct view like if the background image render from the normal view only one of the like a small part of the object uh, rendering from like the anamorphic view, they can, the rest another person can still see the correct view without sacrificing another guest's viewing, viewing experience. Uh, so in summary, the words we did like a, a couple of the display method. For example, display the character in in the spherical display, cylindrical display, and also in the random hole display, or get, presenting those characters on the robotic displays and embody them into the like the virtual environment. This is the part, like all the methods to display the characters. And we also look at how actually if while the user is viewing this display, for example, there was the embodiment, leadership, I guess trust, emotion engagement, and also the privacy. And for the avatars, the an anonymous feature of the avatars is actually for the privacy is a good thing to use. Uh, so here's like a couple of the reference for those papers that I've been talking about, but only, but not all of them based for the part, part of them. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, pretty much it for my talk. Thank you very much for your excellent talk. And uh, so now I, ha I have a few questions about uh, about uh, the talk. So uh, about the audio driven uh, avatar, uh, the audio driven avatar synthesis or as avatar animation. So uh, what, what is the main difference between uh, this method and those audio driven 2D uh, talking face driven method, uh, talking face generation method. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, the, uh, this is a very interesting question because we learned, we developed this system based on the 2D in audio driven methods. Different from the 2D information is that we introduced like a 3D, like the character data set. Because if it's only 2D, when we apply those things into the virtual reality, for example, we use the Unity to apply those characters, we can only see the front view. We cannot see avatars in the 360 degree view. This is a one difference. The second difference is yeah, like the two D audio drive space. Most of the work is to focus this on the real human instead of the sterilized a much more expressive expression, and uh, also it has artistic input from for the data sets. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for your uh, answer. And uh, another question is about the display uh, method. So you introduce four different kinds of uh, display method. So I'm wondering uh, uh, what display method is used in current uh, VR devices, like in VR glasses or... 
Okay, yeah, thanks for the questions. Uh, I, I would like to say, talk about this, this message it, because it actually applies to the Disney California Adventures Park. The highlights of these things is we allows one user to actually see from the correct view without worrying like those like a VR headset. As you can see, like the, the display that I'm been talking about today, most of them is the people don't want wearing a headset in the theme park or the, in the museum. If, if they're using virtual reality headset at home, that's fine, but if they, they don't really want to use it while they're having fun at the amusement park. So the display that I'm been talking about is a glass fray, but people can see it from 3D. Uh, it's not a true 3D, it's a fake 3D, but a correct view. Okay, so, okay. so this technique. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, but that, uh, Panya, I maybe I have a couple of questions as well. So, the first one mm -hmm. can you move, move your slides to the, the slides of leadership effects? Something. Okay. Like that. Yes. Yeah, there's a statement that uh, I'm the last one. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the next one, maybe the fourth, fourteenth. Yeah. You mentioned the uh -huh. statement that the leadership effect only emerges in three dimensional interactions. But not yes. in three-dimensional interactions. Uh, I'm not quite clear about this statement. Can you make more comments on that? Oh yes. Uh, like in the VR, there was uh, like the interaction, like to paint on this spherical uh, sphere, like painting different color on the like the, for the sphere. And also there was you can using like the uh, ray to selecting those colors which selecting is a 2D interaction, the surface is a 2D, there was no rotation involved. However, for the 3D interaction means that you actually inter interact with a 3D object. Like one is interact with a, like a flat object, a flat, like it's like similar to the desktop things, it's interact with the screen that I called it as a 2D interaction. And while, interact with a 3D object, like a sphere, uh, like a cube or different 3D things. I call it a 3D interaction. Okay, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. that, that, that means that 3, 3D interaction does work, yeah. They all work yeah. together. Okay, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another uh, question is about, uh, you know, maybe more technically. Um, uh -huh. uh, in your early, uh, in your state, uh, state of your talk, you mentioned uh, the fisher capture. You mentioned that you adopt uh, machine learning to learn the branch shapes for the face impressions as well yes. as the weight. Okay. Yes. Uh, how many, how many uh, are there uh, or not to enhance the facial expressions quite well? So some people use um, sitting, some use uh, uh, that. Can you make some comments of that? Uh, yes, this is a like very technical question. And uh, for our methods is uh, we, we use like we use a 42 blend shape weight and we only use a two layer and it's, it, and it works. And when we adapt it to the multiple characters is also we use a two layer MLP, it works. And uh, for, for the first uh, machine learning model is uh, uh, for the input, we got a uh, lot of data for the blend shape. And also we have a uh, lot of controller menu was created by the artist. And we fed this, like we match these pairs, it's one by one. How we match it is like I talked about from here. Like this is, this slide is talk about how we actually match the, like the, uh, like each of the blend shapes, each of the controller venues. The controller venue is very expensive, right? And because there's only 40 blend shape weight for the AR kits. And uh, in the controller venue can be a lot of them for different characters. So this is how I match each of the blend shape weights to the controller venues. And then with, uh, based on those match pair, train the blend shape adaption models. And uh, finally, we use that model to build on top of the AR kit. Okay, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you.